The FIRE movement is not what you think, and if you're not aware of what the FIRE movement is, well, it stands for Financial Independence Retire Early. Sounds nice enough. In fact, probably sounds really nice if you're going, hey, Ari, I do not love my job. Or you know what? I just, the thought of being able to travel and do what I want, that sounds amazing to me. Well, it sounds amazing, but here's a few things that I'm going to walk through with you today so you can understand if it makes sense to pursue that. If you're going, hey, that doesn't even make sense for what I'm hoping to do and some of the benefits and cons to the FIRE movement. Now, as a reminder, I'm Ari Taubleep. I am a financial planner and I help people retire early. So naturally, the FIRE movement, F-I-R-E, financial independence retire early, well, that's a topic, it's a question that I'm asked often. And the first thing I always ask is, imagine you're retired today, close your eyes, you're 35. What are you doing? And people are like, oh, I'm gonna be traveling and I'm gonna be able to spend time with family and I'm gonna be able to do whatever it is I want. I say, wonderful, I want you to do whatever you want, but you don't have to sacrifice that at the expense of today. So there are three main things I'm gonna be going over today on why the FIRE movement is not exactly what you think. And number one is ask yourself, what are you gonna wanna spend when you're now retired? Now, why do I put that in quotation marks? Well, let's assume that you are in your 20s and you're working hard and you're going, I want to be able to just be retired. I want to be able to live off of my income, passive income, whether it be through real estate, which I would argue is not always the most passive, especially if you're having to manage tenants and things like that. But then the stock market, which can certainly be fully passive, but you have to manage those ups and downs of the market at times where it might not be so fun. So how on earth are you supposed to know exactly what you're gonna to wanna to spend for the rest of your life? That is the number one issue that I see with the FIRE movement is let's assume you wanna retire at age 35 or 40. Well, that's amazing. You wanna be able to have freedom to do more of what you wanna do. I'm all for that. I'm not against that. What I am saying is that the rules that people talk about when it comes to how to maximize the FIRE movement and how to make sure you never have to go back to work and how to make sure you never run out of money, well, there's one big drawdown there, and here's what it is. Well, that's assuming you know exactly what you wanna spend for the rest of your life. So let's assume that you've worked hard, you've saved, you've invested well, and you have even sacrificed part of your health. And I will say that because those who effectively do the FIRE movement, and I'll say effectively, once again, kind of in quotation marks here, is to really do that and save and be really intentional with how much you're investing. Well. I will advise clients not to do so if it's at the detriment of their health today. So I have clients and I've spoken with people who have said, I have a friend and they're taking two jobs to try to retire early. They're sacrificing playing sports so they can spend more time working. They're understanding, okay, what do I need to do so that I can have that million or $2 million? And if that's you, there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, you might have not heard of the FIRE movement. This might be your introduction. And really what it is is people saying, how can I make sure I have as much money as possible so I can walk away? So if I don't love my job, and most of the time people who want that FIRE movement, they don't love their job. Going, how can I leave that? How soon can I leave that? And so specifically going to what can you start to think about? What is the takeaway? Well, above all else, it's you do not have to know exactly what you're gonna to wanna to spend in retirement. And let's again, assume you retired age 40. Well, let's assume you have a million dollars. What most people will do is they'll save and invest and do everything possible to get to that million dollars. Well, that million dollars, looking at a safe withdrawal rate of just 4%, and if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll understand you can take out more like five to five and a half percent and never run out of money. But here's why you need to think about this a little differently. The 4% rule means that if you take 4% out of your portfolio, call it a million dollars, that that's what you can live off of, assuming you're invested a certain way, and be rest assured you will not run out of money for 30 years. Well, if you're age 40 and you are retiring and you have a million dollars, you can safely generate about $40,000. The danger here though is that's based off a study for 30 years. So let's look at something I use with my retirees. I help people retire early. I help them create tax-free income in retirement. Well, I utilize the Guyton's guardrails approach, which was coined by John Guyton, where he explains you can really take out five to five and a half percent of your portfolio, be rest assured you will not run out of money, and that's for 40 years, not 30 years. Why is that so valuable? Well, 40 more years, that's 10 extra years, and we're taking more out. So as opposed to taking 40,000 out of that million, you can take out 50 to $55,000. That's wonderful. But what if you tell me you are 40, you are retired, and if that's all you need, 
Well, the fire movement might work just fine. In fact, I may even recommend it. Why? Because if you tell me, Ari, I only want $40,000 to live off of, that's all I need and I'm happy. I can travel, I can do what I wanna do, I can fill my time. Well, if you have a million dollars looking at that, it might very well make sense. The thing that people don't take into consideration, which is the second thing here, is taxes. Because if all of your money is in an IRA or a 401k, wonderful, but you can't pull from these accounts. You can't pull from these accounts without, should I say, paying extra taxes, extra penalties. And so do you wanna take that 10% penalty? Well, most likely you do not wanna to have to do that. So where are these funds gonna come from? If they are in a brokerage account, as they often are, well, any money that goes into that, there's no special tax benefit. The money grows and grows and grows. And when you take it out, it's taxable only on the amount of money you made. So if you have $10,000 and it grew to a million dollars, well, you're not taxed on that first 10,000. That's your own money. But any growth from 10,000 to a million, you are taxed on all of that. $990,000, that's taxable. Now, if your income is very, very low, in fact, if you have no income, well, you might be able to realize gains at 0%. That is correct. You might be able to realize gains and pay nothing in taxes, depending on, of course, if you're married and you're filing that way, if you are single and you're filing that way. It depends on a few factors here, but number one is do not feel that you need to know exactly, if you wanna utilize the FIRE approach, you need to know exactly how much you wanna spend every year because things are gonna change. But if you have a temperature check of, hey, I know where I wanna live, I know what I wanna spend, and based off of that, I've gone through some basic tax projections, well, the FIRE movement very well make most sense, especially if you don't enjoy your job. One of the things I do like about the FIRE movement, and by the way, my preference is not I like it or I don't like it. I think that's just not the right way of looking at it. I look at it from the perspective of when does it make most sense and who does it make most sense for? If you really say, you know what, I just hate what I do. I don't know what I wanna do with my life. I wanna save and invest as much as possible. There aren't other passions that I'm putting off to be able to save and invest more. Well, the FIRE movement might work just fine. In fact, it might be great because it gives you the flexibility to pursue more of what matters most. But what I see too often, and this is one of the big fallbacks, and then I will touch on point number three, is that what people do is they do retire and they go, what on earth am I gonna do with my time? They go, not only what on earth am I gonna do with my time, but what am I gonna do for the next 40, 50, 60, 70 plus years? Because if you are retiring well above early, because when we say retire early, that tends to mean before age 65. So call it 45, 50, generally it's that 50 to 60, call it even that 60 to 65 range, that's an early retirement. So that's what you need to think about with the FIRE movement is what are you gonna do? Because what I don't wanna have happen is you do retire and you've sacrificed time with friends and family and hobbies and things you really enjoy to get to this one date where you no longer have to work anymore and you go, oh my gosh, I, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Now, point number three is that, are you gonna plan on making any more money? Because let's assume you're 40 and you have a million dollars and you wanna retire. Well, if you can safely generate between 40 to $55,000 a year, call it that, well, where's that gonna come from? That's number one. Number two though is, are you gonna make any more income? Because if there's more income, well, of course, it's gonna help your financial situation. It semi defeats the purpose of the FIRE movement because now you are going back to work, but I would argue it doesn't defeat it at all if you enjoy what you do. What I tell people is this FIRE movement that's going around, it can be really wonderful. If you hate your job going, I'm not sacrificing anything today. I don't wanna spend more time with family. I'm willing to get a second job. And if that's you, well, the FIRE movement may work just fine. But if you're going, you know what? I just wanna retire early. I wanna have a plan. I wanna be able to have flexibility around my finances and you don't love what you do today, well, that's where most people fall. And then they go towards this fire movement and you don't have to, it's not one or the other. You can still save and invest well and not forego what I would say some of the best years of your life while you have your energy and health and traveling. And if you love being ultra gung ho about saving and investing, I'm all for it. I'm like that. But I also want you to know that you don't have to say, oh my gosh, in order to make this work, I have to not take these fun trips. Oh my gosh, in order to make this work, I don't have to do that. Of course, that's gonna have an impact financially, but I don't want you to be putting off things that you wanna do. And number two, I don't want you to be sacrificing your health. I've seen cases where people will get a second job, where they're not taking care of themselves, they're not working out, they're not meditating, they're not doing 
some of the things that really preserve our health and what's most important, that health is wealth. It's cliche, but it's true here. So once again, with the FIRE movement, it's not a question of is it good or bad. I, I actually like what it stands for, which is flexibility to do what, what you want most. I mean, at, at the core, that's what it is. So I want you to be able to do it, but think about it with this little bit different mindset of, okay, am I sacrificing my health? Okay, do I know what I'm going to want to be able to spend? Because is there going to be a family? Am I going to want to travel more in the first few years and then less later? Where am I going to pull income from, especially if I'm not pulling from my retirement accounts? Do I have enough set aside? There's all these factors to really maximize this fire movement, but those are the main things to think through. Now, comment below, have you thought about doing the fire movement? And if so, what's worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? If you're thinking about the fire movement, comment below and tell me what is coming top of mind. Meaning, are you thinking, yes, I do wanna do this because I hate my job? Are you saying, you know what? No, I just wanna do this because I don't know what I wanna do for the rest of my life, but I'd rather get ahead. Because if that's you, well, you might not have to fully commit to this movement and still have an amazing life and still retire early. So once again, it's not one or the other. And then once again, this is what I do. I help people create a strategy to retire early. Traditionally, that means between age 50 to 65. That's the majority of the people I work with. But if you're younger than that, going, hey, I wanna plan, I wanna understand how to create the most income possible, that's what I help people do. So feel free always to reach out to me and subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you don't know, I am the host of the Early Retirement Podcast, and this is what I love doing. I help people create a custom strategy to retire early. You can always reach out to me or a member of our team here at Root, and we would be happy to walk you through our planning process to show you how we can help you get more life out of your money.